the second key on your journey to receiving beautiful ashes. Ready? Always hope for and expect God's best in everything. Always hope for and expect God's best in everything. The power of hope. Always hope for and expect God's best in everything. Psalm 42 and verse 5. It says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why is my soul cast down, he said. Why is my soul disquieted? He says, Hope thou in God. Romans chapter 4. Number 1. There is hope in the midst of current conditions. So the condition is still there. It's not changed. And so you are hoping that it will change. Hope in the midst of the current condition. Then there is hope in spite of or against all hope, the Bible says. That means that situation has become physically hopeless. Maybe the person you are trusting God to live has now died. From a biological standpoint, that is a hopeless situation. The burial date has been fixed. But in the midst, it, you can still have hope in spite of. Are we together? So there is hope in the midst of trusting for change. There is hope in spite of victory, in spite of the tragedy. And then there is what the Bible calls eternal hope. That even if it fails within this life, the assurance that you are in Christ, eternal hope. These are the levels of hope. I will say it again. Hope in the midst of current situations. The character of that hope is that it is trusting God that the current situation will change and not become worse than it is. Then there is hope against hope. That means a state of hopelessness physically has happened. But the Bible says even in that situation, you can still hope in God. And then number three, there is what the Bible calls eternal or blessed hope. Hope beyond death, hope beyond the grave, hope beyond this life. If you do not have this three level of hope, you will never truly experience this reality of beauty for ashes. Hope in the midst of situations. I'm trusting God that the joblessness would turn for my favor to become a great job. I'm trusting God that the barrenness will turn to twists or triplets. You know, one of our precious ladies who um, I've known her for a while and she sent me a text. I'm sure she's following now, perhaps from the hospital. She's been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And I've seen the pain that this lady has had to go through. And just yesterday night, or was it this morning, this lady sends me a text message thanking God for a miracle. Triplets. God gave her triplets. I mean, I was, I was so happy. I said, come again. You mean, was it? He said, no, triplets. God for you. Hope that a negative situation can change. That is the first level of hope. But that even when that situation closes, because you can water a plant that is dying to come alive, but when a plant is dead, there's no point watering it again. Water does not resurrect a dead plant. It's over. But even at that, you can still have hope that a plant can grow. Maybe not the plant you wanted to grow, but another one can still grow. And then if all fails in this life, your consolation is that there is hope beyond the grave. There is hope beyond this life. Someone say, I have hope. Let the devil hear you. I have hope. And you mean you have all three levels of hope. I have hope that what is plaguing me now that is unfavorable may never be like your mother, but it will cover what her absence would have caused in your life. Are you learning now? And then when all fails, you know that there is eternal hope because I am in Christ no matter what happens the Bible says to be absent in the body is to be present 